Play Ghana. Play Ghana. Play Ghana. Play Ghana. Play Ghana. Play Ghana. Ladies and gentlemen, my name is Koji Sheldon. The head is big for a reason. And as I come sit here like this, they you know say I did come rant. But before I go proceed into the rant, you know, um, for someone like for a young person who is on the come up, uh, when it comes to your personal finances, three things will be important to you: investing, saving, and budgeting. Investing, saving, and budgeting. And that be why I did recommend the ladder app to you, ladies and gentlemen. Now, the ladder app is a personal finance app which is powered by an AI. Now, it is helping Africans, you know, create wealth the easiest and convenient way. Let me read this thing to you. Um, whether you are new to personal finance or pro, lady, that is the name of the AI, your personal financial advisor will guide you through savings and investment in you and uh, investing in US denominated what? Assets. The latter app is safe and secure, user-friendly and very easy to navigate. Now, you just have to down if you are really, really interested in investing and in saving and budgeting. This is the app for you, ladies and gentlemen. I am recommending it to you because when it comes to money and personal finances, it is very, very important to me. Download the app, navigate, you go, you go see like the, the, the mind busting financial growth where you go calm your life inside. Download the app, the ladder app on Google Play and Apple Store. Your mind uh, go bust. Now the ranting, the ranting, R-A-N-T-I-N-G, ranting. When you go on Twitter, Twitter, it's not Twitter, Twitter, um, the hashtag Play Ghana has been trending for the past uh, three days. Now, the hashtag Play Ghana, I don't say Ghana, Bob Born, yes, it Play Ghana. No. The hashtag was engineered by a godfather of the Ghana music industry, Small God. Now, Small God, for those who don't know Small God, Small God is an investor uh, in the creative space in Ghana. Um, he's a talent manager, he's a record label owner. He's that guy, he's that one person that. Every artist they, they go to or they call to when there is an issue. Like, he's that guy just sitting in the back, just pulling the strings, ladies and gentlemen. So he engineered this, this hashtag to get Ghanaian DJs to play more Ga like Ghanaian songs on the airwaves, ladies and gentlemen. Now, this is how he started. He visited a nightclub with two of or one artists, that is Medical and Stoneboy. And he noticed that from 1.30 a.m. or from one a.m. to uh, 5 30 a.m. in the morning no? the dj on location or on rotation who played five solid Ghanaian songs so imagine playing five songs from one to five hey! i don't know why he was counting but i'm sure he was building his case for proper conversation so after that you know, he came on social media to tweet this and let me read as one of the pioneers, Zafenaf Panea, and one of the leaders of the creatives, and also the godfather, I must say, Ghanaian DJs, we really need to talk, because you guys are making our job so hard. As in Ghanaian artists' job so, so, so hard. I was out with Stoneboy and Medical, and more artists. Can you believe from 1 a.m. to 5.30 a.m., we counted five Ghanaian songs played at the club. Come on, DJ, you guys have to do better. These two tweets were targeted at Ghanaian DJs for not playing Ghanaian songs in night uh, in like like in spaces like the night clubs because obviously if I if I visit a night club and from 1 a.m. to 5 30 you are playing like five only five songs from Ghana then there is an issue so he came to tweet this and started the hashtag play Ghana so it wasn't just about the tweet he proceeded to you know talk to like people in the creative space he gathered the people where they get voice in the creative space said this is something we go feel engineered to arrive at a better conclusion and like a conversation where local content local content will be given the you know the space in our airwaves or on tv or everywhere it is supposed to be given uh, the airtime so the hashtag was started now yesterday they met with the people from the ministry of creative uh, arts um, the deputy minister, uh, Marco Krikumante, he has disappointed me on all levels, but that is not what I am here to talk about. They met with them. They met with the people from the creative art agency. Uh, I think their deputy was there, Jan Kroma. He, he delivered a speech. So at the moment, the, there is a review with um, the Ministry of Tourism for the cultural uh, policy. 
which is a split for the local content. We have it's 80% for foreign music and 20% for local content. So with the broadcast, sorry, the other way around, apologies. So that is what we will be reviewing and amending with ourselves, with the Ministry of Tourism, and also the stakeholders and the players within the industry. And so for this festive uh, season, you know, the aim is to get people on the 10 tables to play more Ghana music, hence the Play Ghana hashtag, which is being championed by Small God and his friends. So they went there and George, George they did a presser, they made their intentions known. And that is not the only thing that they are pushing for. They are pushing for a legislative instrument that is going to ensure that 70% of Ghanaian songs are played on our airwaves. All protocol observed. Um, we're going to go right straight to business. I think this is a long overdue call. Um, different people have done it in their own capacity on different levels. Um, since we, we, we joined the industry or since we became professional musicians, since we started traveling, we've always been advocating the fact that we need to hear more of our own music when we are in our own territory. Because, <laughs> because, because that's what we see when we go to other territories. If you go to Kenya, for instance, you hear strictly East African music. Yes, of course, we have the Nigerian invasion, which is inevitable, which is not the competition here. That's not the complaint here. That's not the target here. What we are talking about is that, especially for the fact that we have uh, beyond the return, which has become like, a, like an asset to Ghana. Should anybody travel here and listen to 70% foreign music and 30% Ghanaian music, then what music have we sold to those who returned? So my point here to not drag it and to not be a long um, uh, speaker. Um, my simple point here is that if we value the people coming in and the influx of the, the masses coming in, then let's feed them our own. When you go to South Africa, it is 50%. When you go to Kenya, I think they are advocating for 50 or 70%. When you go to Nigeria, it is enshrined in their laws that they have to play 70% of Nigerian music on the airwaves. So that is binding on everyone. Now come to this country. We are in a stage of, you know, putting out the L uh, legislative instrument for debate. And if it is passed into law, maybe we go free and force them. So this is the premise of the conversation. Now, Ghanaian DJs have an issue with the way Small God started this. Small God started this thing by blaming Ghanaian DJs for not playing Ghanaian uh, songs. Now, you can use just one uh, nightclub that you visited as a premise for your conversation and just jump into like conclusion and tell me, say, Ghanaian DJs are not playing Ghanaian songs. Mind you, there are a lot of DJs out there. So maybe if nightclub A is playing only five Ghanaian songs, nightclub B would be playing, let's say, 20 Ghanaian songs. So the DJs from this side of things, they felt like, no, we are also putting in the effort. You understand? A DJ even came out to tweet, say, they have even created the fertile grounds for artists, uh, artists to send them their work. So uh, if, if you're an artist and you release a song, you send it to like the DJs, right? So that they will play. Some of the DJs, they have a lot going on. So if you release a song and you send it through them directly like that, it's like business to consumer. That one, they have access to the song and they will play it. Of course, Paola and Tuesday, but that one is another day. Uh, it is another topic to talk about. So the DJs too are like, no, no, don't do this. And that is where I think that the problem started. Because if we are going to tackle this issue, we should tackle it holistically and extensively. It is not about DJs. It is about music consumers. It's about stakeholders. It is about new media. It's about digital platforms. When you look at the rankings on how people discover music and consume music, radio, they contribute just 17%. The rest all be digital. Look at what TikTok is doing. Are Ghanaian DJs on TikTok? No. The dancers are like engineering conversation. They are engineering interest towards a song. The TikTokers are actually, um, you know, helping artist songs to blow. To the point that a TikToker was, was bored at, at one point to say, say, without them, no artists, them are songs no go blow. Look at the power that they have. So if you are trying to tackle the whole thing, we could tackle them like that. 
Let us tackle it holistically. Involve every stakeholder. It shouldn't be DJ specific conversation because the DJs, they have power. But those days that an artist like was supposed to go and present a CD to a DJ or play for me, no, it is not working. Look at how people are discovering music. And let us tackle it from that angle. You understand? Now, for the play aspect, I am off. Listen, this is a brilliant idea. Mind you, this is a brilliant idea. For the play aspect, let me tell you something. Now, if we are advocating for DJs to spin the music, for radio station to spin Ghanaian music, do we have the structures to actually track and trace how royalties and copyright monies are, being, are going to be collected and distributed? No. Yesterday, I was, I was combing through Facebook and I saw an artist had posted a screenshot of the amount of money that was sent to him by Gamlo. Do you know how much? 200 Ghana cities. So if an artist's song is going to be spent for, let's say, 5,000 times, do we have the structures, the mechanism to collect the music royalties for the artist? Because it is not about spinning just for spinning sake. It is about spinning and generating what? Wealth, money for the, you know generating wealth like the ladder app right creating wealth like the ladder app for the artists do we have the structures so it shouldn't just be about play it should be about play let us build the structures to track it so that we can make more money for our artists that is the conversation you understand i am passionate about some of these things because when it comes to people using their platforms to trumpet or highlight Ghanaian music I feel like I should be top two in the conversation. It's not even about mainstream. Look at the number of talent that have passed through the KSS system. And they have gone their way to, to they are making uh, like the bread for themselves. I'm not here to boast. I'm just saying. So this conversation, they need me. So as we they do um, the, the protectionism, no? we for do one well. Also the protectionism side where we are trying to protect our local interests. No? Listen. We, I don't, I don't know if I go fit classify our industry as a growing or a grown industry. But for a, an industry where when an artist free release song, then go to Nigeria to go and do promo and things, go to other countries because they want to activate their sound in other territories. Now, protectionism or protectionism is good. But at the end of the day, when you institute that kind of LI instrument or whatever, and other countries to retaliate, where you go stand? I'm just saying, I'm just throwing that out there. Where you go stand? Because right now we are in a global space, right? We are in a digital space where discovering of music no be bound to like a specific place. Ooh, bro, anywhere you go feel pass, you go feel discover music. So if we are trying to protect our local interest, are we even in, in investing in, in creating local content? For example, this is not music specific conversation. Let, let's look at the um, the content that is, that are, or that is being shown on our TVs. We have big, big TV stations in this country picking telenovelas from other countries, translating it into key for our people to, to watch instead of investing in what? Creating original local stories or local content. You understand? So this conversation shouldn't just be about what? Just music. It should just be, it, it should be about our local content policy in this country. Do we have the, the, the people to uh, the structures or the systems to enforce it? Even if there is a law like that, then that'll be where we have the problem. So I love the fact that small God and his people are leading this conversation. It is about time. It is about time. But we need to be calculated as we do go through them, as we do them. The blame game no go help. It no go help anybody. You remember. Yeah, let me tell you something. Me, I'm in the content side of things. You know why most Ghanaian content creators, especially the skit makers, don't use when an artist them are songs in their background, uh, skits or dance videos, unless you pay for it because sometimes copywriting, you understand. Sometimes even you use some of you use some of them, them are songs in your, you know, your content, and it is blocked. It I remember I, I did a reaction for one artist in the album. I sat here and I was screaming bass, my nigga bass, my nigga bass for about 30 minutes. We edited the video, we posted it and the video was blocked. 30 minutes 
of sweat, the video was blocked. Now, mind you, I'm not saying say, the artist shouldn't collect the royalty on the, the copyright claim on the video. You can collect and still make the video visible to the audience because we are all making the conscious effort to trumpet your music out there, right? This one, it was blocked. No one was seeing it. So the effort, that is why I have stopped reacting to music. Like, you know, those days, the energy that I used to do, I've, I've stopped because I know if you sit here, then rant for about 30 minutes about your music, I put it out there and the, the content gets blocked. No. So this is what I'm saying. So this is not a DJ specific conversation. Because when we target the DJs, we are eliminating the important factors to the background. And that will worry. Let's just open up the conversation. Bring all stakeholders on, uh, stakeholders on board. How can we make the conscious effort to make sure say, we do this? If you put the blame on Ghanaian DJs alone, we have failed. It is going to fail. Everyone should make the conscious effort. People are creating content. They are using this. When you go to my story, when you go to my uh, Instagram, I'm using Ghanaian songs in the background. Charlie, I'm trying. But I can't do it alone. So this festive season there, the DJing part in there, we are some more more But there's some of the DJs too. Please, 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 please. Ghanaian DJs make the conscious effort to play Ghana. And some of you, some of you, they try. Some, some too. They, they, they've made up their minds. But then you can't blame them because at the end of the day, you see, they play what the people they want. You understand? If I am a DJ. And if I play, um, let's say, Jola Balaba, give me your hand and sugar, and the people will turn upside down, I will play it. You understand? So that's what I'm saying. But there are some that sometimes you just have to make the conscious effort that we are going to play Ghana music. Although maybe it will go against you. Because the more we play it and it resonates for them ahead inside, they will get used to it. So we all should come together and make the conscious effort to make sure say this. Thing. And this is not a fight against Nigerians or Kenyans or South Africa. When you go to Nigeria, they have a law like that. They have a law like that. That is protecting local content. Here, we don't have it. And so maybe the retaliation thing says, you know, go worry anybody. You understand? But at the end of the day, let us make the conscious calculated effort. I have had an issue with an artist where the artist thought I was actually using his song to make money. I was feeding off his craft. Back and forth, fighting. Don't react to my song. Don't do this. Don't do this. A whole lot of things, a whole lot of conversations they will have. So big ups to um, uh, um, Small God. Big ups to Gomez. Big ups to Black Sh Black Sheriff was there. Samini was there. Uh, Reggie Rockstone was there. People from the creative space. A lot of them they were there. I was supposed to be there, but I couldn't make it because you know a lot of things they happen right now. I need to fix. So ladies and gentlemen, brilliant initiative from Small God. Let us all support it. But once again, the conversation is not DJ specific or this specific or artist specific. It is a holistic effort by everyone that is going to help solve this particular issue. Play Ghana is a hashtag that I expect everyone to push. Play Ghana is, I don't want this thing to be a live service where they will just go and sit there and just say, oh, we are going, no, no, no. Make, pass it into law. Let us protect our local content. Because ah, sometimes you go to tune into traditional media and they are showing some, me, some content. Ah, how? So you, you are telling me that we have not invested in our lo local content developers to come up with potent content that we can show on prime time? This is what the industry has turned into? We can do better. So ladies and gentlemen, this, this is not an editorial. This is an anthology. My name is Koji Shard and this video was brought to you by the Lada Personal Finance app. As I said, if you are looking at growing financially, investing and actually investing in the right US denominated assets, download the Lada app or Google Play and Apple Store and you go, you go enjoy what I'm talking about. I'm out.